our immune system was the first to come up with the idea of using bacteria. The greatest concentration of bacteria is found in our digestive system. Over 400 species line the walls of the large intestine, constituting our intestinal flora. They form a living barrier against dangerous bacteria. All the intestinal villies we can see here need to be coated with probiotic bacteria. If not, undigested protein can pass through into the blood. White blood cells then struggle to cope with a poisonous protein that must first be broken up into amino acids. This then allows the formation of pathogenic pleomorphic forms. Pancreas is the only organ in the body that makes enzymes. This is why fermented foods are actually excellent at supplying bacteria. Probiotics such as cheese, grain fields, men, biobubble, all provide lots of those bacteria that create enzymes for us, as long as there's good minerals present. But how is this flora renewed? Most bacteria are destroyed by the acid secretions of the stomach. However, certain bacteria, through their abundance or their resistance, come through the stomach alive. Like Tempeh is a soybean ferment that's fermented by a fungal mold. And then there's miso. Miso is also an appropriate way of fermenting and culturing soybeans in a healthy fashion to produce more amino acids have been worn down by environmental toxins, pollutants, pesticides, an imbalanced diet, preservatives, processed foods, chemical additives, smoking, alcohol, and medications. It's no wonder that we often suffer from heartburn, indigestion, constipation, diarrhea, fatigue, stress, and a host of additional problems. Where monostrain probiotics contain just one probiotic strain. Let's find out how it works. I'll show you, step by step, what happens, where, and when. In this healthy situation, the gut microbiota is well balanced. So pathogenic bacteria that can make you ill and cause nasty diarrhea will have very little chance to do any harm. The intestinal defense is active on three levels. The first level is inside the gut. The second level are the epithelium cells that form the gut wall. And the third level is the immune system. I will now explain these levels in more detail. In a healthy situation inside the gut, on level one, we find pathogenic inhibition. Also in a healthy situation on level two in the gut wall, the epithelium cells that form the gut wall have effective working tight junctions. These tight junctions prevent bacteria from entering the body. Level three, the immune system. In a healthy situation, Healthy microbiota trigger the immune system to produce immunoglobulin A. These immunoglobulins have the power to neutralize pathogens. This can cause imbalance of the microbiota. In such a worst case scenario, the intestinal defense system is working insufficiently on all three levels. On level one, inside the gut, pathogenic inhibition is absent due to the imbalanced microbiota. The pathogenic bacteria cheerfully multiply. On level two, the pathogenic bacteria travel freely through the junctions of the epithelium cells that form the gut wall, right into your body, where they can do a lot of harm. At the same time, on level three, the immune system is not triggered to produce immunoglobulin A, which means the pathogenic bacteria are not neutralized. I couldn't show this better than showing no movement at all in this part of the visual. The grey bacteria here are the friendly probiotic bacteria, whilst the spider-like larger ones in the wound itself are the harmful bacteria. And as you see the probiotic bacteria come in to replace them, they begin to, the process of healing the wounded lesion in the intestinal wall itself. The 
the bacteria in yogurts. Scandinavian researchers have come up with the idea of adding good bacteria to widely consumed foods such as fruit juices. There are many brands of yogurt and in each of these are different strains of bacteria. A multitude of different bacteria are of great benefit to us and these are some of the strongest types and strains of bacteria from Natasha Trenev. The bacteria we encounter as infants can dictate how our guts and immune systems develop. The first bacteria to reach the gut can influence what other species are able to gain a foothold and once formed, the unique composition of a person's bacterial colony normally remains constant. A newborn baby picks up bacteria from its mother. The type of bacteria that develop in the newborn's gut depend on the type of feeding. Bifidobacteria become the dominant species in breastfed babies thanks to substances in the breast milk that encourage their growth. Other bacteria, including Clostridia, Bacteroides and Streptococci, flourish in the guts of babies fed formula milk. Breastfed babies generally have fewer gut problems than formula fed babies. Fermented foods are usually high in bacteria or fungi and this combination of bacteria and fungi can create amino acids and help the body and the pancreas with its enzyme content, uh, especially when there's enough minerals there also with yeasts and generate these good guy bacteria. Kombucha, the tea fungus, is also very good at creating or storing and housing bacteria that ferment tea, whether it's green tea, herbal tea, and any medicinal property that the tea has is enhanced by the bacteria and the fungi that break down the sugars and enhance their medicinal effects. Like deserts, the arid regions of our skin are sparsely populated. In the armpits, life abounds as in a tropical rainforest. When we use soap too often, we destroy this protective mantle. Without this natural barrier, fearsome bacteria, like the Staphylococcus aureus, can settle in. Monganga savon médical permettra d'éliminer les bactéries et de préserver l'hygiène et la santé de votre peau. Bacteria-based soaps are manufactured in India. We can replenish our good bacteria with yogurts, kefir, kombucha, kimchi, sauerkraut, and sourdough breads. Bacteria colonize everything: our mouths, our tongues, our teeth. No need to eat yogurt to get your fill of bacteria. With a simple kiss. On the surface of our skin, we have a trillion. If you weigh 75 kilos, you have over one kilo of bacteria. But don't worry, only one bacterium in a thousand is pathogenic. There are also good yeasts and bacteria on the skins of fruit and vegetables. So we can remove these with excessive washing or leave them intact when picked fresh from a tree. 